Hello everyone. Today, in this video, we will be starting the third chapter of your science syllabus that is the digestive and the excretory system. Before that, let us recap what we learned in the first two chapters of your science syllabus. In the first chapter, we learnt about the types of food we eat, which can be plant-based or animal-based. Then we read about the different types of nutrients present in our food, namely carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins and minerals, roughage and water. We also read about what is a balanced diet and what kind of diet children in your age should be having. We learnt about how we might be facing food every day and how we can prevent it. And finally, we read about the different methods to preserve food for a long time. Some of the examples are drying, freezing, canning, fermentation and pickling. In chapter 2, the teeth, we read about how important our teeth is. The different types of teeth that is incisors, canines, premolars and molars. We read about the different parts of a tooth that is crown and root. They comprise of the parts enamel, dentine, gums, pulp, nerves and blood vessels. We read about the different steps to take care of our teeth. And we also read about the foods that are good for the health of our teeth while foods that are not good for the health of our teeth. Today in chapter 3 we will learn about digestion and the human digestive system, the different organs or parts that are involved in this process. We will also learn about the importance of chewing and water in the process of digestion. We will also read about our excretory system and we will finally read about some healthy food habits. Digestion. The food that we eat gives us energy to work all day. It makes our bones healthy and strong. But in order to get the nutrients present in our food, it has to be broken down into a form that can be used by our body. This breaking down of food into simpler parts releases the nutrients in the food, which is then absorbed by our body. The process by which food is broken down into simpler, smaller parts that can be absorbed by our bodies is called digestion. Let us have a look at the digestive system in our body. The different organs that are involved in this digestive system are mouth. This is where the digestion starts. Next we have the food pipe. Below that we have stomach. Beside the stomach we have liver. Below that we have the small intestine and the large intestine. Below that we have the rectum and finally the anus. All these organs work together to di help us digest our food. Now let us have a look at each organ in the digestive system and their functions. We will start with the mouth. This is the part where the process of the digestion starts. We use our teeth to chew the food and almost turn it into a paste. The saliva in our mouth mixes with the food and makes the food soft and easier to chew. The tongue helps the food to mix the saliva well. Then we swallow the food. From there we move on to the food pipe. It is also known as esophagus. After we swallow the food, it goes down through this food pipe to the stomach. Digestion does not take place here. Next we have the stomach. The food enters here through the food pipe. The stomach is like a bag made of muscles. So as we eat, it can expand. You must have noticed sometimes that when you eat a little bit extra food, your stomach feels full and bloated. This is because the stomach expands to accommodate the food that you are eating. 
and as your food gets digested, the stomach goes back to its normal size. The process of digestion that started in the mouth continues here. The food is mixed with digestive juices present in the stomach which further break down the food. The liver is another organ in the digestive system. It is present beside the stomach. It produces digestive juices that is transferred to the stomach. These juices help in the process of digestion. After that, the small intestine is a long tube-like organ that looks like it is packed like a coil, like a mosquito coil. The food from the stomach is passed down to the small intestine. The small intestine then absorbs the nutrients from the broken down food and passes it to our blood. The blood then carries these nutrients to various other parts of the body. So the digestion of food is completed here in the small intestine. Now what happens to that undigested food? This undigested food then goes to the large intestine. The large intestine is also a tube-like organ which surrounds the small intestine. The undigested food left in the small intestine enters the large intestine. Here the, the large intestine absorbs the water from the undigested food. The remaining waste part is then collected in the rectum which is the final part of the large, large intestine. The remaining waste part or undigested food is called feces. Anus. This is the last organ in the digestive system and it is the opening through which feces is passed out of the body. So this is how food enters our body, is broken down and then digested by our body and finally part, undigested part is removed from our body. Now we will read about some more factors that are important in the process of digestion. For example, chewing. Digestion starts in our mouth and chewing the food properly is the very first step to a healthy digestion. Chewing food breaks down the food into very small pieces, almost a paste, which makes it easier to swallow. The food then easily passes down the food pipe. You must have noticed sometimes if you do not chew your food properly or if you swallow it before you have chewed it properly, it feels very difficult to swallow sometimes. Therefore, chewing it properly before you swallow it is very important. Chewing also helps to mix the saliva with food which contains digestive juices. In the stomach, this broken down food mixes easily with the digestive juices. If we do not chew the food properly, it will not break down properly. You see, our mouth has teeth and tongue which helps us to chew the food and break it down properly. But our stomach and food pipe do not have this teeth that will help them to break down the food. So it is important that we chew it properly in our mouth before we swallow the food. So when we do not chew our food properly, it can. there are chances that it will not digest properly which can lead to indigestion means when your food is not digested properly. This can further lead to heartburn which we also call acidity. You must have heard your elders talking about having acidity on some days or gas on some days. This also can lead to constipation and headache. A healthy digestion means regular bowel movements. Regular bowel movements or passing stool regularly is important for the body as it helps to remove the wastes like undigested food and toxins out of the body. If we do not pass stool regularly, the waste and toxin collected in our body can cause stomach ache and digestive problems, bloating or gas etc. Now, we, need, we will talk about the other important factor that is important for our digestion, that is water. We already studied how our body needs water to remain healthy. 
Water also makes the digestion process easier by helping the food to pass easily through the intestine. Water is important to remove toxins from our body. If we do not drink enough water for every day, our body will suffer from dehydration, which is a common cause of constipation. Dehydration is when there is less water in your body. The large intestine absorbs water from the food we eat. We already discussed this. If there is not enough water in the body, the stool or feces that leaves the small intestine will become hard and cause constipation. Drinking plenty of water and other liquids like juices or food that contain water can help prevent constipation. Now that we have understood how digestion takes place in our body, let us come to the excretory system. Excretion After the process of digestion is complete, the waste part is removed from the body through the anus. Water also helps in removing toxins from our body. The process by which waste is removed from our body is called excretion. And just like the digestive system, there are some organs that are involved in this process. Let us have a look at our excretory system. This is how it looks. This organ on the right is called the right kidney and on the left we have the left kidney. Then we have these two pipes which are called the ureters. Then we have the bladder and finally we have urethra. These organs together form the excretory system. Let us see the functions of each organ. The kidneys. We have two kidneys in our body, one on the left side and the other on the right. They are the main excretory organ in our body. They filter the waste from our blood in the form of urine. This urine is passed to the ureters. Now what do the ureters do? They are two thin pipes. They connect the kidneys to the bladder. As you can see in the diagram, they connect the kidneys to the bladder. As you saw in the diagram, they transfer urine from the kidney to the urinary bladder. Next, the urinary bladder is a sac-like structure made of muscles. It stores the urine that is transferred from the kidneys. From here, it is flushed out of the body. Urethra. It is a tube below the urinary bladder. It flushes out urine from the body. So this is how the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder and the urethra work together to flush out toxins from our blood in the form of urine. There are also some other excretory organs in our body. Our skin is an excretory organ too. It removes toxin from our body through sweat. Our lungs remove water vapor and carbon dioxide from our body when we breathe out. The liver also removes excess fat and cholesterol from our body. We already read in chapter 1 how excess fats can lead to obesity. Cholesterol is needed by our body in small amounts but when there is too much cholesterol in our body it can lead to a lot of medical problems. Therefore the liver helps to take care of these. Now we have come to the final part of the chapter where I will mention some healthy food habits that we should follow every day. We should drink about 8 to 10 glasses of water every day. We should always have our meals at a fixed time every day. We should sit and eat our meals. We should not eat in a rush. We should chew our food properly before swallowing. We should eat fiber rich foods for proper digestion. We read in chapter 1 how fiber is important for digestion. We should keep check on the portion of food we eat. Overeating can lead to indigestion. We should exercise daily. So by following these few healthy habits every day, we can keep our body healthy and strong. With this, we come to the end of our chapter. In the next video, I will give you some exercises like fill in the blanks, 
diagrams and question answers for you to solve based on this chapter. That's all for today. Thank you.